Um, Mr. Wang, please. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, OK. Excellent. Um, I think <coughs> Donald Trump is divisive force in the United States as well as in world politics. And divisiveness is not, divisive is not the only adjective I want to add to his uh, description, but I don't want, I refrain from using other words here. Um, he is divisive as world politics is more divided. I think the, United States, uh, the world has been more divided since the end of the Cold War. And when we look at world politics, uh, we see three different things. Uh, first is the combination of rising populism and rising nationalism. And they are reinforcing each other as represented in the United States and elsewhere. The second trend I see is the rise of authoritarianism and great man politics which are also represented by Trump in the United States and by some others in other countries. The third thing I see is the intensified geopolitical competition. We see that in China-US relations. We see that in, uh, in the Middle East between Iran and Saudi Arabia and some other countries. We see that in the US-Russian relationship. But the third trend I described, geopolitical competition, is that representative of the Trump administration we will have to see. If I move to the US-China relationship, Trump himself has waged trade war with China. What, what are his goals? What does he want to achieve in trade war with China? There are two different expectations. The first trend the first uh, interpretation is that Trump wants to uh, address the trade deficit. He wants China to buy more uh, goods from the United States, and he wants uh, manufacturers go back to the United States. But uh, this is Trump. But what are the other objectives? Uh, I think what one other explanation is uh, the United States wants to change China's industrial policies. Uh, IPR is one thing. And especially people are focusing on high-tech competition between the United States and China. There's the fear that China may catch up with the United States in terms not only economic growth, economic uh, out uh, output, but also high-tech capabilities. That view is represented by Trump's advisors like Navarro, uh, Lifeizer, uh, uh, Cutlow, and some others. And the third view uh, about the US-China uh, trade war is that the trade war is meant to prevent China from rising up as a global great power. This is related to power politics, geo geopolitical competition. And this is also related to uh, uh, road, uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And I think these people are also uh, have their voices in the White House, uh, like John Bolton. And this is ma mainly power politics. The fourth view, or the fourth perspective, is that the United States want to undermine the leadership of the Communist Party in China. They, they are now talking about human rights violations in Tibet and Xinjiang and the religious problems and so on and so forth. And they have their voices in Congress. And uh, the, the thing we don't really know is whether Trump is taking care of uh, human rights. I don't think that is his feature, uh, his, his, his thinking. But, all the four trends I'm talking about in China, all the explanations in China-US uh, trade war, uh, uh, what we see in the United States policy toward China, uh, trade deficit, uh, IPR or industrial policies, 
uh, power politics or great power competition, and China itself, whether China is moving in the right direction or in the view of the United States, or China is, a, a lot, is violating human rights and so on and so forth. And that is also related to China's worldview, China's world uh, behavior. So Trump is actually con controversial in China. I don't think it is exaggeration to say that Trump's image in China is probably better than in Europe, uh, in large of the Middle East. I don't know whether China's his image is better in Japan or in China, but uh, why is he controversial? I think first, some people like him because he represents some kind of political correctness in the, in the United States. And those people who those people who like Trump do not like multiculturalism. They have their uh, voices expressed uh, by some kind of reservation about uh, immigration to China from Africa, from some Islamic countries. And they are afraid of Islamism, uh, uh, Islamic e extremism that is reflected in China. The, sec the second grouping who like Trump, maybe uh, they are seeing in China's foreign policy uh, uh, communities that Trump is helping China. He is damaging the United States in the world, giving way to China's rights, so we should welcome Trump. He is, he is doing a lot of harm to US images in the world, so China has more strategic opportunities. And the third grouping who admire, admires Trump is that uh, he is a leader who delivers, who uh, fulfills his promises, and he gives the United States economic uh, advantage and, 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 and surging. So, uh, he, so some people even say that press, Trump's pressure on China may help China's economic reform and opening to the outside world. So that is not necessarily bad. China should take this advantage of competing with the United States so, and China could improve its IPR records and, and so on and so forth. So this is my description of Trump in China. That's very good, Mr. Wang, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you, um, um, Mr. Michael's theory, which he gave us earlier, um, is that <clears throat> Trump acts tough as a negotiator, but is very happy to claim a modest success as the greatest success in the world. <laughs> and if, if I'm not misreading you, Michael. So is that the view in China, do you think? Or, or is Trump more worrisome? to the Chinese as a challenger perhaps too early for China's future? I think it depends on who you are talking about in China. Uh, and, and government officials are hesitant as to what China, Trump's role is in US-China relation. Trump himself claims many times that uh, he sees Xi Jinping as his good friend, and he respects Xi Jinping. He, and actually, he wants to establish direct connections with not only uh, uh, Putin, but also Iranian leader, and Kim Jong-un. So what's wrong with his connection with the Chinese top leadership? That is one thing we can take advantage of. But also, people say that he is very unpredictable. For instance, if, if China makes some major concessions in trade with the United States, will he be satisfied or will he put more pressure on China? That is quite debatable in China itself. Yes, yes, I think it's debatable everywhere. <laughs> Thank you.